I'd like to introduce Susan Schroeder. She's a nutritionist and optimal wellness coach. Susan is joining us from her Oakville studio, Lean On Me Nutrition. Um, welcome, Sue. Um, I'm Hello, really ladies. So nice to be here. Um, a little bit of background for those of you joining us for the first time. We did do a live event with, um, with Susan and a few other guests uh, just before COVID lockdown. Um, we had some really great questions, a lot of great information, and a lot of people following up asking us um, to share that information. So, um, Susan, I'm really happy that you're joining us. Uh, I think t today's topic is obviously particularly really relevant. We're not just talking about you know, menopause and the common um, myths around it and the uh, fact that it's not a disease, but also, um, you know, like what women need to know about it, what's happening and, and some things that they need to know about their own bodies, how it can impact their experience. And also right now we're going through uh, an intensely stressful time with lockdown with COVID-19. And so many of us who are going through menopause are also parenting and homeschooling and being a wife and a house, your house is a disaster if it looks like mine. And, um, and we're trying to keep, you know, our stress levels down, but we also have these crazy um, hormonal imbalances happening. So um, the reason um, Susan's joining us is, uh, Susan, I'm going to let you take over in a minute, but I want to quickly just tell everyone about the blood analysis you did for me. Uh, a couple of months ago when I went to Susan because I was having like tons of problems around my menopause and I'm post-menopausal three years and my symptoms were getting worse, my depression, my anxiety, my sleep, um, the hot flashes. I'd had some blood work done by my GP, which apparently came back completely normal. And then when Susan did my dry and wet blood analysis, we were able to see the story that my blood was telling, which was pretty grim at the time. It was like, I was pretty much deficient in everything except for wine, right? Am I right? <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> Wine in a good sense of humor, which is also very good. <laughs> so yeah, so one of the things that we learned by talking was there's some really common deficiencies that women go through as they enter the perimenopausal years. And, uh, and a lot of us, I don't think, even know it's happening or you know, what to look for or how to fix it. So, um, so on that note, I'd like to turn it over to you. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's a pleasure to be here because I do consistently hear from women that they're being dismissed by their doctors. Um, they're being told that their blood work is normal. So what does that mean? That it's all in your head? That you made it up? You know, are you offered antidepressants? Are you brushed off? Like, this is just not cool. And so it's really important to, like I we need to re-educate our doctors about, so maybe we need to go off and get ourselves figured out and then next visit, enlighten them as to, you know what, this is what was really going on with me and I feel so much better. Um, you know, so that's kind of my approach. So I love to help people. So it was great to see your blood and um, you know, it's just, it's a pleasure to do what I do. So um, I like to sort of start out with the thought that what if menopause and perimenopause weren't really something to be shunned or you know treated as such like doctors will say um puberty is another hormonal shift that all you know men and women go through but it's not treated like a disease so really if you look at menopause as sort of a reverse puberty it kind of gives you the perspective that really our bodies can be supported yes we may have some ups and downs no not unlike a hormonal teenager which thank God I'm not working with right now. <laughs> Kudos to all the ladies that are homeschooling and doing that, but I'm a little past that. <laughs> um, but, you know, if those annoying symptoms you're experiencing, they could well be just little mini messages from your body. And part of my job is to listen to the messages, sort of the unspoken messages of what all those little symptoms and things you're experiencing could mean and how they all connect together to be um, your story. So I do believe by listening to your body and uh, honoring some of the needs of your body, you can heal. We all have an innate ability to heal. Please don't ever let a doctor curse you to the fact that you're stuck with what's going on or 
don't become hopeless because there always is hope. Our bodies are so resilient and beautiful. Um, but one of the things that I see a lot, um, and I think Jackie, this would be true for you, is it's women that are givers and giving and giving and giving. Years and years of doing that and not sort of giving back to yourself or having any downtime to look after yourself can really start taking a toll because as we switch into menopause, what happens, there is definitely a hormonal shift. And as the ovaries start um, going on their permanent vacation, as far as um, some of the hormones, sex hormone production, our adrenal glands take over and they start producing a lot of our progesterone that we need. Progesterone is sort of the dominant hormone in the second half of your, if you're having periods in the second half after ovulation. And it's pro-gestation. So its job is basically to hold a pregnancy. But what it also does, it's a very um, anti-anxiety hormone. So it's a, a very calming hormone. And we still need it as we age because it does things like um, helps with bone structure. It's not just estrogen that does that. So progesterone is very important. And when the adrenals are asked by the ovaries to take over a little bit of that um, production of progesterone, and they've been having long-term um, busyness, let's say, uh, where you're give, 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 and your stress levels are up here constantly, and you're not sleeping, and you're not nourishing yourself properly. The, the ovaries, they start shutting down. The adrenals are asked to pick up the slack and start producing, and they just can't do it properly. So what happens is we get a decline in progesterone, and we have, again, this estrogen dominance by default because estrogen and progesterone play some of the things that can happen um, with chronic stress is this adrenal fatigue, adrenal insufficiency, whatever you want to call it, it has different stages, but there's no prescription drugs as such for general adrenal fatigue. So doctors are probably never going to acknowledge that this could be one of the root, root causes of some of your problems, but I see it a lot. And what can happen um, when the adrenals are fatigued is you can have things like being very jumpy. So if somebody comes up, like when your kids come up to you and say hi, and you jump out of your skin, or somebody slams a car door and you jump like almost you know right out of your out of your shoes, that's sometimes a clue. Um, and also light sensitivity. So going out into the sunlight and having you know you're like oh give me a minute I gotta adjust. It isn't just because you have light eyes. That's, it's about the dilation of the pupils. And um, the other thing too is sleep. Sleep can be greatly affected because cortisol um, is a hormone that the adrenals make as well when we're stressed. And when we need more cortisol for general health, and it's, it's actually an anti-inflammatory, not just a bad stress hormone, cortisol takes priority in the body and progesterone depletion gets shuttled, the progesterone production gets shuttled over to make more cortisol so we have good uh, anti-inflammation. So at three, about three o'clock in the morning, when the cortisol is your wake-up hormone as well, you may find you startle into wide awake. You're like, what the heck? I was fast asleep. And I think, Jackie, you mentioned something about this um, happening for you. Oh, and yeah. Every woman then you I can't know back. talks about it as the witching hour. Yep. Yep, pretty much. And then you can't fall back to sleep because then you're back on the give, give, give cycle. What do I have to do next? And all the clue. And then the other clue about your adrenals might not be happy is that you can be a night owl. So it's sort of like you're really tired in the afternoon, right after dinner, and you, you could just go lay on the couch and be out. But if you get past that, you keep push, pushing yourself, you just don't get tired. And you can go till like, so that's a not waking up rested or other clues that this might be going on for you. So, so what are things that we can do to like support our adrenals? Yeah, it's a great question. So. 
obviously we've heard how good it is to breathe and to be calm and to be peaceful. Yeah, try and that during COVID. This time, <laughs> but we want to make sure, yeah, but even if you can, you know, get away just for a little bit and just check in with your body and see, you know, am I like play with being peaceful for even five minutes, even in the bathtub or something like that. Breathing can be really good, especially before your food, because when you're all tight, it's not conducive to digesting well. Um, so the other thing that we can look at is supplementing with certain things, because whenever we've got a lot of stress, we're going to be using up some of the nutrients that we can get from our food. So things like vitamin C, magnesium, B vitamins, potassium for some people. Um, these are all things that the body is going to burn off in higher amounts when there's big stress going on. The, actually, the adrenals have more vitamin C than any other place in your body. So you can see how being deficient in that could definitely um, cause some issues over time. One of the sad things that's happening too right now with COVID is um, due to the stress levels, a lot of women are hitting the wine a little bit harder than they normally would. Um, and sadly, so using funny. alcohol as, as a means to calm down, uh, <laughs> and you know, at the time it seems like a good idea, but sadly, it's burning off the exact same nutrients that your adrenals need to help you feel balanced. So I'm not saying wine's a bad thing. You know, red wine definitely has some nice uh, health properties, but it really is worth taking a look at what is the cycle of me using things outside of my own thoughts and my own abilities to calm down. So that's, that's definitely something to be aware of. Um, a I lot definitely of noticed with um, during COVID, like, I agree with you. Like a lot of us have been drinking more than usual, myself included, just, you know, your hours are different. It is a coping mechanism, but I've noticed that um, because I've been drinking more that suddenly I'm starting to get some menopausal side effects that I haven't had in a really long time, like hot flashes. I haven't had hot flashes in years and I've been getting them the last couple of weeks. And I think it's because I've probably been drinking a little bit more alcohol than I'm used to. Yeah. And Ramona is actually, you talk about people who are like overextended and giving. I mean, Ramona, you're home with two kids. You and your husband are both like employed, but working crazy, crazy hours. So there's the guilt of you have of like not being able to see your kids and the crazy hours that you're putting in. So of course you're like, you're, you've got to like layer on the stress from COVID onto you know, whatever else is going on in your body. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about, it's another balancing act for, for all of us ladies. But um, something to think about too, is that if you can get either, you know, things like magnesium, whether it's from eating lots of dark leafy greens or, um, you know, even taking something like a nice Epsom salt bath or I have a great product called Alkabath from Germany that you can sometimes find. It's great for, um, you know, absorbing some of those wonderful minerals into the body. But these are things that are actually naturally calming to us. So getting enough magnesium in is a natural um, anti-anxietal. So if you see this big wheel of imbalance that can happen, um, and this is where, you know, getting some help is to say, what are, what are your specific deficiencies can be really good, but um, we're certainly burning through things. And then you have to sort of look too at the, um, you know, salt cravings and the different cravings that people are getting. And um, of course, eating more wheat and uh, for the Robin Hood flour, there's lots of flour, but there's no bags to put it in. So it um, shows you how many home bakers are at play. And, um, you know, sugar is a big thing and it's a happy thing for many people, but I think it's also gone far too to the extreme. And then you've got um, other issues around cortisol because you've now spiked your blood sugar and you're getting these blood sugar highs and lows. You can be hangry or lightheaded or um, just needing constant carbs and things like that. 
Um, and then of course your waist is probably going to expand a little bit, which is even more depressing, but it's really, um, I'm blessed that I'm not much of a baker, but I love stirring and cooking. So I've been, you know, making a, chopping vegetables. I'm, I guess I'm weird, but I find that kind of calming. And if you chop really hard, it's almost a de-stressor, but, um, really good to try to stay focused on your diet. Great to have treats on the weekend, but taking that break in between meals can be really great for just calming down your blood sugar, feeling peaceful, and just having more normalcy um, through your day. Because what happens as you start having all these blood sugar regulations is the liver actually is having tick adrenals. And we really need our livers to be happy and peaceful and supported as well, because that's where most of our hormones get organized, recycled, or expelled out into the bowels to be pooped out. So when we're putting a lot of, um, if you know, you're eating M&Ms and candies and colorful candies and more junk, and this is something that's overlooked um, with doctors as well, that they don't really look at, well, where in this woman's body are the hormones being produced? And can we support that in any way? So I see a lot of um, fatty liver and uh, early fatty liver and different, um, different things happening that can definitely cause hormonal havoc. Are those and things so that's reversible, just another, Susan? I'm sorry? Are those things reversible, like fatty liver and like the damage that can be done, especially during this time? Is that reversible or is that sort of like you can stop the damage at a certain point, but you can only sort of maintain it from there on? Like if you get fatty liver yeah. from oh, all so the stuff we're doing, <laughs> can we fix it? Yeah. Yes, you can. And you can do it because the liver is um, really the only organ in the body that can truly regenerate. So early stage, for sure. If you're, you know, obese, very obese and you've got, you know, years of um, lots of sugar and obviously alcohol as well, the liver's going to take a longer journey, but it can certainly heal. And, um, Blood work for liver enzymes is something that's really fascinating to see. Uh, doctors are reluctant to do that. And even OHIP has now taken out one of the blood markers for liver um, dysfunction. It's now not able to be ordered except by a, um, like a liver doctor, a hepatologist, or um, an endocrinologist. So we've got that taken away from us now. So wow. there's no symptoms for fatty liver. This is part of the problem. So you can have it and you don't know. But part of the blood, the blood work that I can do for the program that I offer definitely shows um, a good range of the liver enzymes. So I do see um, it's happening with um, be helpful. Like I say, the liver has to be supported. It has to be nourished properly um, so that we can have proper hormonal balance. What do you think, um, Susan, like aside from COVID, what would you say the biggest deficiencies women north of 40 typically experience and might not even know about? Like when I came to you, I had no idea I had any deficiencies. I walked in thinking everything was fine, except that I was going crazy. Yeah. So pretty much every, every woman I see, omega-3 fats are deficient and that shows up in the uh, in the shape of the the blood cells that we see on the the live and layered blood that I did with you so omega-3 fats are great for your brain they're really calming for anxiety they're anti-inflammatory there are these fats are the backbone of hormone production so this whole low fat, no fat, fat free trend that hopefully is changing is, is crap quite basically because we need healthy fats. Our ancestors had them. We don't have enough of them now. 
So omega threes would be definitely one. Um, magnesium for sure, like I mentioned before, just because our we burn through it when we're busy, stressed. Whether that's good stress or I'm stressed really bad, it it doesn't matter because if you're busy, that's stress to the human body. When there's no times of peaceful peacefulness in between, it's going to be the same as being stressed. Yeah. So magnesium, um, constipation is a common uh, form of leg cramps later, especially at nighttime laying in bed. That's common. Um, That's common for omega, an omega deficiency? Magnesium. For magnesium. Interesting. Okay. Yep. And you'll also find like period cramping that good magnesium and omega-3s will be really, really helpful for um, menstrual cramps because the uterus is a big muscle and the omega-3s will calm down inflammation and the magnesium will be a little bit of a relaxant and that can be uh, quite helpful. B vitamins are another one of those things that we burn off when we're busy and really, really important for metabolism and converting, uh, digesting and converting carbohydrates and um, just for energy and, and feeling good. Like a lot of our neurotransmitters and um, brain chemicals depend on B vitamins. So, um, and then we've got to talk about vitamin D because every, I have the ability to test vitamin D um, and pretty much everybody is really deficient. Um, COVID has shine, sort of shone a light on the fact that vitamin D is really important. Like, have you ladies heard about, you know, the importance of it through the media? Yeah. And, and from what I understand, we're basically, most of us who live in North America are vitamin D deficient. Is that true? It is. And especially um, women that have darker skin. So their bloodlines came from other places in the world where there was an abundant supply of sun year round. I'm thinking about the East Indian or the uh, African, uh, you know, truly dark skinned people. They have a real, real issue with it. And then they, you know, they're here now in Canada and we haven't seen a lot of sun, sadly, not even this spring. So it's, really hard to to have enough um we used to test vitamin d routinely like any doctor's blood work that was ordered we used to test it but then i think it was around 2011 the ohep and a couple of some of the other provinces they said you know we're, we're spending all this money to test and everybody's deficient why don't we just tell people to take vitamin d so they actually took vitamin d testing off the um standard, um, they call it the CBC, the um, complete blood count. So, but nobody's getting the message that they need to take it. And they're certainly not being told to take the right amount or the right form. So um, it's definitely going to mess around with a lot of things, including mood and, and hormones as well. And um, it's, it's sad. And we really do need to test to know how much we need because everybody has different abilities to make it from the sun. Um, whether you wear sunscreen, obviously that's going to um, block some of the production, what your kidneys are doing because they're the vitamin D is activated there. So lots of factors that, um, you know, could affect it. So, you know, another thing that I found really interesting, um, Susan was, um, you had mentioned, um, I think when we were talking um, about, you know, if I looked at my diet and said pre-COVID, not my not my new wine COVID yeah. diet, but um, where I was eating a lot of leafy greens, tons of kale, lots of meat, and when you did my blood, it was sort of surprising that I was deficient in a lot of areas like the irons and minerals and whatever. Um, I think a lot of women don't know this, and Ramon, I don't know if, if you and I have ever talked about it, but um, you know, a lot of the symptoms I, I was having, am having, anxiety, sleep problems, you know, Ramona, you and I talked about hot flashes. I get the surges in the middle of the night where it like feels like adrenaline going through your legs. Um, they have been made worse by COVID, but um, you had made me do the, uh, I did the at-home um, stomach acid test. 
And I've just been reading in the past year about how our yes. uh, is our second brain. And I have learned through you and others that our hormones are kind of, are they housed there? Are they, what's going on? They're, they're there. Our hormones well, are gut somewhere. There are some, there are some stomach hormones, um, but not so much when we're talking about the major sex hormones, not so much. Okay. But the fact but that stomach acid, you're right though, because, but it's really important because we kind of take our stomach, we take stomach acid to be something harmful, like, oh, I've got acid reflux, and you see all the advertisements on the TV for, you know, just take this little pill and you're good. But what happens is we need that stomach acid to start breaking down and binding things like B12, which is super calming and really good for all sorts of things, um, and also zinc and many other minerals that, you know, zinc, again, this is another COVID element. We hear a lot about zinc, and that's another common deficiency. And we need our stomach acid to properly break down all our foods so that when they're delivered to the, to the small intestine and the magic of digestion continues, all the nutrients are used. So definitely when you're stressed, we all know you don't digest as well. I mean, that's not conducive to running away and fighting a day, you know, the whole fight or flight um, process of we have this response to stress, whether we're going to fight, fight the enemy, which could just be traffic, not these days in COVID, but you know what I mean, like an, an unseen or a real danger. We're either going to fight it or we're going to run away. Um, the human response to that is totally different from being resting and digesting. So, you know, we're going to get clenched up and our, and our, our shoulders are going to come up. Our eyes are going to dilate. We have a hormone rush so that we can be super strong. And none of that is conducive to digesting. Some people will even throw up when they get really nervous. So, you know, it's yeah. quite the opposite. But I feel like a lot of women and men, but we're talking to women, um, don't really know, um, like until you and I spoke, I wouldn't have ever thought to do a test to check my stomach acid but when you when we realize my stomach acid is like clearly on strike no wonder i'm eating all these normal healthy foods but i'm not getting the benefits because it's my stomach's not dispensing them i don't yeah. know if i'm saying that yeah. right but and the same no yeah it's not breaking them down and you know you can take all the supplements in the world but if your stomach acid isn't working you're just not nothing's gonna happen right so you really have to this is the problem I have, and, and Ramona and I have talked about it, I'm sure you've talked about it to so many people, like, when you go to your GP and you explain these things, and you're met with just this, you know, well, it's so frustrating, because I should have been working on this months ago, I bet you I would have felt better months ago, going into COVID, I'm, I'm sure I could have been in a lot more stable position, um, and the other thing that we had talked about, and I'd read in this book that I, I think you guys, we've talked about this, the Moody Bitches book, um, that we do need progesterone, progesterone. And I'm postmenopausal. Yeah. And when I asked my doctor after we spoke about progesterone, progesterone, um, she said, Well, do you want whiskers? And that was the answer. And that was the end of the conversation. Hmm. And I just like again, it, it goes to the fact that when you go to your doctor, you're really not gonna walk out of there fully armed with the information that you need. I, I guess they're just not trained in that area, but, but what would you say for yeah. women, you know, like, like us at home right now, um, you know, like the layered on stress of homeschooling is unbelievable and it's going to go yeah. on for a while. So how can women who also have like perimenopause or, or in menopause, how can they kind of like balance all this? Like, You've talked about some great things, but are there any more supplements they should be considering, or is should they be testing themselves somehow, or like, what, can we, what can we do to make this bearable? Yeah. Well, what I would really like to point out that is I really feel that this whole COVID situation has really caused um, sort of a magnification of what's really what the issues in someone's life are. So you can sort of find some time maybe to just reflect on what's really bugging me. Like what's making me the moody bitch per the book. Um, 
you know, is there some of these things, patterns that I can change, little steps, but I think just getting into um, eating better and being hydrated, like getting good water and shifting away from the baking and starting to make some good meals, even if they're cooked, you don't need to be doing raw superfood smoothies and all these things. Sometimes cooked foods are easier to digest for people that are struggling a bit. So just starting to get good food into your body is always going to be a good answer. Um, really watching the snacking so that you're having good three solid meals like our aunts, you know, like our grandparents did. They weren't snacking all the time. Um, so that can be really, really helpful. Okay. Um, I don't know. I would say omega-3 supplementation can always be good. But again, there's so many um, different types. And maybe we could do another talk sometime about how to look for a good supplement. But yeah. Um, but magnesium is a pretty safe bet. So um, something like a magnesium glycinate uh, taken at bedtime, you can definitely benefit from that almost immediately. Uh, glycinate form will give you the bowel, uh, the loose bowels, like some of the, the powders that you get that are like uh, form. They will definitely give you diarrhea pretty quick, which is good if you're constipated. Women that are, um, you know, that are stressed are actually opposite and they're a bit loose uh, in their bowel movements. A glycinate form will get out into your body and start calming down, like I say, the leg spasms and the, uh, if you've got like twitchy eyes or twitches in your muscles and things like that, um, that would be a good bet. And again, take it at bedtime because it's a nice calming mineral. So um, lots of good clean, uh, clean products out there. I love um, like Pure Lab, Canprev, they all have AOR, they have some really good clean um, glycinate form magnesiums there. So, so would you food, also... Food would be ideal, uh, yeah. Would you also recommend that they try doing a test to make sure their stomach acid is performing? Like, is that a common problem, the stomach acid thing? Yeah, you can. Um, there's... You can do it with some uh, organic aluminum-free baking soda first thing in the morning. You can add um, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda in a quarter cup of cold water. And before you do anything else in the morning, right when you get up, you can drink that and time how long it takes you to burp. Right. Hey, you're that's you're a creating good creating a sign experiment. Volcano, right? Yeah, isn't that Your fun? kids will love it. <laughs> We can make a home experiment. Yeah, a burp, a burp test for the whole family. But the, what happens is the stomach acid um, is always there regardless of whether you're going to eat something or not. And if you have stomach acid there, when you put the baking soda in, it's going to make a you know chemical reaction. It's going to make a bubble and it's going to come up. So it's, I mean, it's not very scientific. Well, it is in a way. It's chemistry, but... Um, it definitely is a glimpse into what's going on. So if you if it takes you a minute and a half and you burp, you can say, hey, my stomach acid is pretty good. But if it takes you like, you know, seven or 15 or I never burped at all, then you might be a candidate to get some um, supplemental hydrochloric acid or some digestive enzymes just yeah. for the short term. So there are uh, ways I can help. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say you when you when I tried it, um, you know, I think I knew three minutes was sort of around the normal. Five minutes was like hmm. I was at eleven minutes. I was thinking yeah. of just chugging some baking soda just to make it happen. But yeah, I, I knew I was in trouble at eleven minutes. So <laughs> yeah. So all yeah. of these supplements. Susan, like, does that support our adrenal glands, or is there something else that we should also be taking just to support the adrenal adrenal glands? Pardon me. Yep. Well, the adrenal glands are um, part of your whole endocrine system, which also includes the uh, thyroid. So a lot of times, women will be having issues with their thyroid as well, which just throws a lot of havoc into the 
hormonal picture, but we'll save that for another time. But um, the adrenal glands, even though they're the same in all people, adrenal healing can take on several forms because there's different the ways that it manifests in different people. So as a holistic practitioner, you, you look at sort of helping and supporting the person that has the condition, not the cookie cutter where, okay, we have, we think we have adrenal fatigue, so we're going to do one, two, and three. Right. So there are some, so there's different things like ashwagandha and rhodiola and some very calming things, but there's people that their stress manifests in different ways. So they can be like tired and wired, or they can just be flat out, you know, um, on the couch. So getting those basic nutrients in, like the B vitamins, the vitamin C, the magnesium, um, they're all going to be really supportive in nourishing the adrenals. So that's going to be kind of a, a route for a good start for a lot of people. And then we can start looking at some of the more calming things. So um, there's lots of adrenal support formulas there, but adrenal healing does take some time. I got to warn people, this is not going to fit into the current society of, you know, quick fix, take a pill. Um, yeah. So it does take a bit of time, but you can start feeling better pretty quickly. Like I say, the human body is, is quite good. And especially if you step into that self-love and self-compassion where you are going to say, okay, you know what, no matter what, 15 minutes before bed, I'm going to, you know, turn off my, my screens and I'm going to actually just focus on my breathing or I'm going to, you know, work with some of the old ways, the essential oils and like a good herbal bath or just being still, you know, go out and look at your garden or go look at a tree. These are, you know, nature is healing. And, you know, we've been sort of robbed of that ability for a while too, for certain people. So yeah. Yeah. more of a loving, a loving approach uh, where possible, you know, it unlocks a lot of miracles for people's healing. I do. Um, I watched a great webinar on um, today where the uh, chief revenue officer of Pinterest was sharing the insights from Pinterest with brands. And he said that um, just from their data, what they're collecting, that healing and self-care has gone up like 65% online. Like that's what people are searching for and pinning and, and starting to really investigate how they can take care of themselves. So that's, you know, like there's a lot of uh, fear and stress around COVID, but there are some really good things coming out of it where we can kind of learn to, you know, take care of ourselves and you know as moms um and people with careers we always put everyone first but you know there's good evidence that we need to put ourselves first that's right mm -hmm. and this is why we're doing this right like having conversations with experts like you during this time when people are scared they're stressed they're overworked we need to find ways to support our systems um body and mind. So thank Absolutely. you for sharing all your insights. You're welcome. Yeah, that was really wonderful. And um, if anyone's got some questions, we'll be following up with a, a Q&A. So we'll, we'll share that information. Um, Susan will share your information too. People can reach out to you directly if they like. Um, I, I do I think, you know, we're, we're opening up a big conversation here. And I know it's going to bring with it a lot of questions, which we're excited to hear, right? Yeah, <laughs> but we do have to always remember that with all the dark times, there's usually some sort of silver lining that comes out of it. Um, and I think just like say magnifying what you want more of in your life and maybe what you can do with less of, um, you know, is, is an opportunity for sure. And of course, we know from the mind, body, spirit perspective is what you believe you receive. So if we can do all our efforts to stay out of the total craziness of fear and really focus on love and the love that we have around us. Um, it's going to be definitely helpful. Right. Thank well you said. so much. Yeah. Susan, thank you. We hope to have you join us again soon. Um, I would love to. Stay that. healthy. 
And uh, and Ramona, we've got um, we've got part two in our three part series of North of Forty coming up. So uh, stand by for that information, and we will see you soon. Okay. Bye, Bye Susan. Thank you.